Hello everyone, this is part of my series on Middle Earth collectible card game strategy. In our previous episodes, we constructed the resource side of the deck, our characters, and the hazard side. Um, this episode will be about the sideboard, which is kind of the last part of the deck. Remember, this is designed for a hero versus hero deck, so I'm not going to bother with a fallen wizard or um, this is for dream cards. So we don't need any of that. Now, in a standard two deck game, we're allowed a 30 card sideboard. And the purpose of the sideboard is to, well, okay, let me go with the mechanics. There are certain effects that can cause you to take cards out of the sideboard and put it into your main deck. The main purpose of this is that you can react to conditions that you see during the game to have cards that either you want to get but later or you think might be situationally useful, powerful in the right situation, but not so flexible that you're willing to include it against all comers. Now, generally that helps your hazard side more than your resource side because your hazard side is necessarily more reactive than the resources. On the resource side of things, you want cards that A, you might go for a second, in a second after the deck exhausts. Um, so like that's why, if you remember when we did the resources, we included Tom Bombadil in the sideboard because we want to play Goldberry, but after the deck exhausts, Old Forest will untap, we can go back pick up Tom for three points and a superpower guy. Uh, we have a few more backup factions and I included Alliance of the Free Peoples here because hopefully we will get a Dwarf, an Elf, and at least one Man faction. And we can use that to then boost the factions we've already got in play. If something goes wrong and say we never get the Blue Mountains War, or actually no, we have two Dwarf factions, so that doesn't hold. Say something goes wrong and we don't get the Elves of Linden, then this card is worthless. And I don't want to have it around to you know, draw it, never be able to use it, and waste up space in my deck. Um, I'm not sure if I'll include any here, but spells are also a good resource to put in the sideboard. Again, they're good to have later. The spell can't be used without the wizard in play. You don't want to have risk drawing the spell before you draw the wizard, but presumably you will play a wizard before you exhaust, so you can then put the spells in the sideboard and either use the wizard to take them out or um, just, you know, put them in when the deck exhausts. I don't have too many, you know, any of these in this particular deck, but it's also very good for resources that need to be played in sequence. For instance, the white tree or Malorn. Again, same thing as with the spells. You don't want to draw the white tree before you have the sapling stored. So you put it in the sideboard. You don't want to draw Malorn before you've got um, Earth from Gladriel's Orchard. Um, in general, I would say that the main theme with the resource side of your sideboard is to keep enhancing what your deck is already designed to do. And don't forget that you can go back and revisit sites that you've been to already. On the hazard side, and if you recall with the hazard deck, I actually included in the main deck something that will help us pull stuff out of the sideboard. I go with something of the reverse. Again, because it's impossible to prepare for every contingency, I like to include hazards that cover areas that I couldn't cover in the main deck in case it looks like my opponent is going there. Um, in this case, uh, I can't really go anywhere in freedom. I don't have any creatures that'll hit free domains or free homes, so I'm going to include a trio of assassins in the sideboard. Um, I'm going to include a trio of fell turtles as well to cover coastal seas. I'm going to include a couple of corruption cards, especially... Um, I think that you should have the Will of the Ring in, not two should be enough, in your sideboard for al almost any deck. This, um, you're completely useless if your opponent isn't playing one ring, um, but in case he is, this really can mess him up. Um, let's include a few more. Whoops. 
another anti one ring um, as an agent. And, uh, do, 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 do. and I'll put in a few more corruption cards in general. Again, I kind of like corruption in the sideboard because remember what I was saying during the uh, what I was saying during the hazard side of this. Corruption punishes your opponent after they've gained resources. Um, it's most effective when your opponent has some items out already, so getting them in a bit later doesn't really hurt. We're already up to nineteen. Wow. Um, do, 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 do. I'm going to also include a Nazgul or two. Give a bit more cover to Dark Domains, and also the Nazgul can help cycle the sideboard. I actually really like Indur's special ability, where he can force someone to discard an item that's Often overlooked, in my opinion. Okay, I think that's enough sideboard hazards. Let's put one more greed. Greed's a very powerful. And you know, okay, I said I'd stop, but I won't. Um, I'm going to include two lures of power. Again, a corruption, a nasty little corruption. To, in case someone tries to, especially if they try to influence. Nah, but. Muster Disperse is another good hazard for the sideboard, in my opinion because it, again, it's useless if you have it before your opponent plays any, um, any factions. I do want to include a few more resources though, so I'm going to knock out some of these. Um, I was considering this card for the main deck, Magical Harp. Um, that'll be a second a second, um, second item for Zark Doom. Um, again, kind of help protect against anything that'll bounce me away from the back into the hand, especially if I've got the fellowships out, will be a threat that's more dangerous once I've developed a bit and played some of my cards. Um, we already have Glendry. You can probably include another Palantir, because um, Lusset and Cairn will untap. And maybe one more greater and a couple of majors. Let's put Orcrist. We were considering it for the main deck anyway. And majors, majors, majors. I think, um, let's just go with Swords of Gondolin. Not the fanciest card, but it's simple and effective. And there we have a sideboard. Um, a bit weighted towards the hazard side, but again, I think the hazards is a bit more, the hazards need it, and especially with our unexpected outposts, we're going to have it a bit more accessible. Um, than the resource side of things. So let's, oh, I thought I had decided to get rid of Elven Rope and get Cram instead. Um, 
with the way we're going to pump, we're planning on pumping hazards. Oh, there's something I forgot. We definitely need three twilights in the sideboard to help control environment, which means we need to take out some stuff. Um, we don't really need two swords of Gondolin. Probably don't need two alliances of free peoples either. And I'll make do with only two assassins. I like ass assassins are just generally strong too, so I like having them. Um, but I did want cram instead of the elven rope because if we're making a nasty hazard environment, I do think the easier to use cram will be a bit more effective and no risk of losing it if the guy holding it gets wounded. Um. So, and here we have it. I think this is a good first draft of the deck. We've got our resource plan. We've got our hazard plan. We've got sideboard that'll support it. Next up is to playtest. I'm going to set up a game against someone. I'm going to hopefully record that and play it. That will be a much longer video than any of these because a match, especially one where I slow down, I'm going to try to narrate my thoughts and what I'm thinking about during the game is probably going to take several hours. Um, these past ones have only been, you know, 20 minutes or so tops. But I hope you found this informative and hope you found it enjoyable. Next time, see you at the game.